Hello, Facebook family. Hello, hello. Natanya here. Come on in. You are watching Topics and Tea for Virtuous Living, where we have a topic of the week. We have our tea and we discuss how we can be virtuous women in today's society, in today's world, according to what God has written in the Bible. So come on in here. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me just make sure I am connected. On my devices here. Come on in. Okay, looks like I am on. How is everyone today? I am so excited to see you. I, it's been about two weeks since I've done Topics and Tea. Um... Or has it just been one week? I think maybe it's just been one week, but I do want to just publicly thank Miss Octavia Fleming Woods, uh, Woods Fleming, excuse me, who um, did topics and tea for me last week. Um, I had another engagement so I couldn't make it. So I just want to thank her for doing it. She did a beautiful job and she also did Fridays with ABBA for me. So I just want to thank her for her, um, her sacrifice and just being there and taking over. I just, I truly appreciate it. And uh, what I saw, um, from what I can get in. Hello, Uncle Gerald. How are you doing today? Hello, hello, hello. Um, and Uncle Gerald, go ahead and put in your your business information because I truly want to shout out your business. Um, he is someone who is always, and I mean always, sowing into someone's life, financially, spiritually, um, physically, everything. He is always sowing into people's lives, especially for the homeless. Um, for those of you who know me, you know that my heart's desire is to one day open up a homeless shelter. So Uncle Gerald, I'm so proud of you. And I just pray Pray that God gives you the strength and the means and everything that you need to continue to do his work because you are doing a wonderful job at it. And hello, Main Mutta. I was just talking about you, about how wonderful you did last week and how I appreciate you doing Topics and Tea, Topics and Tea for me and Fridays with Abba. Okay, everybody, let's get started in today's, um, today's lesson. It is called She Has a Preference, A Woman with a Preference. She has a preference. So let me show you what I'm drinking first and then we can go ahead and get started. So I know I've had this mug before. It is my pray, pray, pray mug because in this hour and every hour, we need to continue to pray, pray, pray. Today's tea is a tea I just whipped up a few minutes ago and it is apple, raspberry, cherry tea. Apple, raspberry, cherry tea. I use some cherry juice some apple juice and some raspberry tea bags and some honey because y'all know what I always say. I like it sweet. I like it sweet. So it's apple, cherry, raspberry. Um, and it's got a little bit of the tart from the cherry um, and a little bit of the zing of the raspberry, but the sweet from the apple. Okay. All that flows together. So let's read these benefits here. Apples are good um, for fiber and they're good in antioxidants. They will lower risk for many chronic conditions, including diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. And they also promote weight loss and improve gut and brain health. Cherries are low in calories, um, vitamins, and nutrients. They're also, they also have vitamin C, vitamin A, and vitamin K. And they have potassium, magnesium, and calcium. So these are some good, that's some good fruit. And then also raspberries are good for potassium, heart health, and proven to lower blood pressure. So this is an extremely healthy tea. Um, anybody can make it. You can use any of the combination of things I just made. So yes, very healthy. What God has already put on this earth to heal our body. I'm a big believer in natural medicine. So let's get started. She has a preference. She has a preference. I see my numbers fluctuating. So if you are just coming in, let me know who you are so I can greet you. So I almost made this topic a woman with a preference or the woman, um, a woman who prefers. It was a few different titles that went through, but I just said she has a preference because we're going to go through a variety of 
Uh, we're going to go through three things today and I'm going to tell you why I believe as a virtuous woman we should prefer one over the other. But the reason I kept the title she is she has a preference, a woman with a preference, is because wherever you are in God, you may prefer the other thing that I'm talking about. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you are wrong. It just means that you may not have reached the level that I'm at or I may not have reached the level that you're at. So we may think differently. But we're going to discuss some things that I feel like um, we need to make a decision in our lives as virtuous women. So the first thing is I want us to, to uh, look at the definition of preference. Preference means um, that you have a greater liking for one thing um, sorry, it says you have a greater liking for one alternative over another, which means that doesn't mean that I don't like both things, but I have a greater liking for one over the other. And the word greater liking is what I really want us to keep focus on today. We have a greater liking. Um, this topic was actually birthed. You guys know I'm always getting topics different ways. This one was birthed last Sunday or the Sunday before. I think it was last Sunday. When I was getting ready for church and I was listening to my Israeli worship, um, Mr. Paul Wil Wilbert, very famous Israeli worship leader. And in one of his songs, um, I think it's Show Us Your Glory or something like that, I think it's called. But in the song, he says, we do not seek your hand, but we only seek your face. We want to know you. We want to know you. Those are the words. And I, I, I've heard this song so many times. I love this song. But I was doing my makeup and I was in the mirror and I was like, we do not seek your hand. We only seek your face. And as many times as I've heard that, it almost seemed like that Sunday it just really hit me. And I was like, you know what? As a woman of God, we should prefer God's hand over his face. As a child, we should prefer his hand over his face. But it just made me think, I was like, this right here, this is something. So I was like, we have a preference. So that's how the topic got, um, I got inspired by the topic. And that actually is our first thing we're going to discuss today. A virtuous woman, we should seek God's face over his hand. Now, when I say his hand, I'm referring to the things that we can get, you know, the blessings, his, you know, his protection, him moving things out of the way, him giving us things, um, him elevating us. That's what I refer to as when I say hand. And when I say his face, I'm referring to God's character, God's, um, God's heart, his personality, his wisdom, his glory, his presence. All of that is, one, is what I'm referring to when I say face. And it makes, me, it, it makes me think this. We love the hand. We pray for the hand. You know, listen to your prayers. When you pray, Lord, you know, thank you for this day, blah, blah. God, you know, I really want a new house. God, you know, I really want this. I really want this. You're asking for his hand. But does the majority of your prayer as a woman say, God, show me more of you. Give me more of your spirit. Show me more how I can, you know, be uh, pleasing to you. Show me this or reveal to me, God, give me a different experience in your glory. Give me all those are the type of things we ask when we ask for God's hand and I mean, God's face. And when we ask for God's face, that's where we get wisdom. And when we get the wisdom, that's where we can get the tools for everything else we need when concerning the hand or everything else we need in life. And it made me think that if we just continue to ask for God's face, you can get to such a place in God and such a place in worship that anything you think that you're lacking or anything that you think that you need is no longer even important to you because his face, his presence, his glory is everything. And this is what um, I really believe God showed me this part. And again, this could just be for where I am right now in my life. And it was that God's hand is a privilege. God's face is a necessity. And the reason I'm saying that is because think about our lives, you know, God's hand, God kept providing, kept giving you food, kept making sure your bills got paid, kept making sure you had clothes. You can survive just by the things that his hand can, you know, hand would give you. But if you never saw, if you never experienced God's presence, if you never sought, sought out, seek his face, if you never got into that place in worship, your spirit is then in jeopardy. And that is like spiritual death. 
Like I couldn't imagine going one whole day without hearing God. I couldn't imagine going one whole day without surrounding something, you know, with my faith or with God. So when we pray, I, I encourage us as virtuous women to focus on praying for things that come, praying for God's presence and for him to reveal himself more to us, for him to give us more revelation of who he is. And in that, we'll get the wisdom, we get the understanding, we'll get the discernment, we'll get the tools, we'll get everything we need concerning the hand and the blessings and all the stuff that we spend in time praying for. So the first thing today is we are women that seek the deeper level of God rather than material things. And that is his face, his presence, his glory, his visitations, all of that over God's hand. Again, remember going back to the uh, definition or going back to, yes, the definition of preference. Remember that it said that you have a greater liking. I'm not sitting here telling you never to pray for God to bless you or never to pray, you know, never to bring your concerns or your desires of your heart to God. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying if you had a choice, you know, it reminds me of, you know, sometimes in a conversation to get to know somebody better, I may say, OK, well, would you prefer this over this? Which means which one really do you like? The other one you'll settle for. But your true desire is what? Our true desire is God's face and his presence and his glory and his, 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 a relationship with him over his hand. So that's number one. Number two, as a virtuous woman, is that we prefer go a godly impact over popularity. A godly impact slash influence over popularity. And this is what I mean. Social media has made us become a society that measures success um, with how many followers you have on a certain platform or measures success about or how many people shared your post, how many people tell affirm you every day, how many people call you on the phone, how many people tell you that they love you, how many people like your status, how many people, um, you know, uh, voted for you for whatever. That's how this society, this world, that's, that's the mentality that we're given. That means that you're successful, that you're liked. But as a virtuous woman, we have to say, I would take the influence and the true influence that counts. I would prefer to be a woman who had a small ministry that impacted people to the point where every single time I came on live or every single time I went forth and whatever, people's lives got changed. People wanted to grow deeper to God. They would rather see, they were getting closer to seeking God's face. They wanted to change their lives. They wanted to get their homes in order. They wanted to be better Christians, better daughters, better virtuous women. We need to prefer to, to have such an impact where people feel changed and closer to God and grow a desire over a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand people liking and sharing our posts and everybody's remaining the same. Everybody's still doing what they're what they're doing. People are following you for years. There's there's some churches who members have been there for years and have not grown at all. They don't, they're not deeper in God, their lives have not changed, they're not praying more, they are not fasting more, they are not sacrificing more, they're not desiring to, to, to be different, they're still living in the same sin because of maybe the the status that their pastor has or maybe because um, the pastor is more concerned about the numbers. You know, I'm really leery when I get on people's lives. And there's nothing wrong with telling people to share your posts or share your lives, something like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But it really sometimes just a little bit rubs me the wrong way when I see pastors get on there and like, share this, share this. I only have two people watching me. Share this, share this. And it's like, wait a minute. But your two people may really be getting what God told you to, to put on the airway. Those two people may really be getting changed. Those two people may really be getting, uh, um, you know, uh, th whatever they need, their confirmation. Sorry, I was looking at my dog. Those two people may really be getting what they need. And that should be more important. I'm reminded of the scripture that says how heaven, I think it's in, I think I wrote it down. Yes, Luke 15, 7, it says, Likewise, I say unto you, the joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents more than over 90, 99 just persons 
who need no repentance. And it just makes me think, oh my gosh, if heaven is, is rejoicing off of that one person who gives their life, do you really think that God is saying, God is, God is going to rather you reach three people and they make heaven rather than hell. Three people who grow closer to him. Or you reach 300,000 and nobody, nobody gave their life. Nobody changed. Nobody's living for him. So women, we have to prefer to have a godly impact over popularity. Never get discouraged at how many people aren't liking your Christian posts. Never get discouraged at how many people may not be following your, your, your ministry or your business or your whatever you're doing, whatever God has called you to do. Because as long as you are being obedient to God and you're influencing somebody to be better in God, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Godly impact over popularity. The next thing that we as virtuous women should prefer is we prefer to be um, planters and tenders. Uh, uh, we, we prefer to plant and tend to a garden and seeds that we plant rather than being consumers. We prefer to be gardeners rather than consumers. We prefer to plant, to sow, to nurture, to water, and to develop rather than to eat. And there's nothing wrong with eating. Remember the definition of preference, you have a greater liking. But this is this is what it made me think of. God has entrusted women with life. God has entrusted women with pregnancy, with making things grow, with making things develop, with taking care of themselves so that a baby can grow. Women, there is something special about planting seeds. There's something special about um, waiting and having faith that that seed is going to grow. You know, anybody can eat. Anybody can, you know, pick up an apple. And sorry, I got to sneeze, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, anybody can plant an apple uh, or anybody can eat an apple. Anybody can eat an orange. Anybody can eat some greens. But not everybody can grow those trees or the stems. Not everybody can make the, the seed that comes as a little, little seed grow into something where hundreds or thousands or many people can eat from. It takes patience, it takes dedication, it takes uh, knowledge and wisdom. All of that is needed to plant. You know, when you plant a garden, you have to make sure your timing is right. You can't plant your seeds too fat, too early. You can't plant them too late to where they don't have time to develop. So you got to be a woman of timing. You got to be a woman of knowledge. You know, there's certain things, certain um, vegetables can't grow next to other vegetables. They'll cancel each other out. So you've got to know what you're doing, but you also, this is the biggest part, you have to be a woman of such faith when you plant. You can walk by, you can walk by a, um, a, a pot and see dirt for days. But when you know that you planted something in that seed and that you've been watering it, it takes a special level of faith to know that soon and very soon, it may be three or four weeks, but there's going to be something that spuds up and it's going to grow and it's going to grow into something beautiful that many people will be able to be uh, fed from by your seed. By your seed. I think number two and number three are kind of going in, kind of go together because in the same way, we prefer to be women of impact. We prefer to be women of influence rather than be the women who are just so popular. Nothing wrong with the popular women. But how much impact do you have when you're the one that grew the food that everybody is eating? How much more impact do you have when your child is changing lives because of the seeds that you put in your child? How much more impact do you have when your husband is able to be the best businessman you know, changing lives and bringing in uh, a lot of money into your household because of the encouragement or the push that you put in him, the the way that you helped him. Do you see what I'm saying? Everything that a woman does, the seeds that we plant, they will feed you, right? If we talk about food, they will feed you. They will grow into something bigger than even what you've planted. Your plant is so your seeds are so precious. And this generation is a generation of women. I see it all the time on TikTok and internet. They don't, you know, they don't really want to have families. They don't really want to have husbands or children, or they think it's kind of, you know, um, 
they call all these terrible names to be stay-at-home moms or whatever and I get it I, I I get their point but I think that we're losing the the knowledge that it's a privilege that God has given women to take care of our families because not everybody can do it there's a certain level of nurturing that God has put in us. There's a certain level of love that God has put in women. There's a certain level of wisdom that God has put in women that gives us the ability to plant those seeds and those seeds will grow into other things. And that the other things that bring glory to God, all because of what God put in you. So I would say, let's be women that say, okay, God, let me not look at this as, you know, I got to get up again. I got to raise more kids. I got to do this. And yes, I understand it's tiring, but look at, look at it as a privilege that God is allowing you to sow so that many more people will be able to eat and reap up from the seeds that you have planted, the seeds that you have planted, and to make sure that the seeds that you plant are good seeds, that they are good seeds. Okay. So let me just review really quick. So today we're talking about having a preference as a virtuous woman. You have a preference, which means that you have a greater liking between the two, the two things that we're talking about today. And number one was we prefer to seek God's face over his hand. We prefer to seek his presence and get in his presence and get that deep level of worship over his hand. Nothing wrong with his hands, but we want his face. We want to know him in a deeper way. Number two was that we prefer to be women of godly impact over women of popularity. We, pr we prefer to be women that leave a, such an impression and a godly influence on this world rather than every single person knowing our name and not even being, in, not even being changed by our presence. Number three was we'd rather be gardeners, the ones that tend and plant the seeds of, that God has given us, rather than the consumers, those who are eating from the garden that we planted, that we planted. Anybody can eat, but not everybody can grow. Remember that. Anybody can eat, but not everyone can plant and grow. We are givers. There's a special anointing on us women to give and to grow seeds. So let's have our tea. I told you I wouldn't be here long. It's only been about 20 minutes. Let's have our tea, ladies. Remember, for those of you who came in and out, I am drinking apple cherry raspberry tea today. With honey. With honey. It's got that zing in it. Okay. Tea for our tea. Our tea for takeaway is that we are women of choices. Being a virtuous woman is being a woman of choices. Women, we have to prefer. I already went over what we have to prefer. We have to prefer those things, but most of all, we have to under we have to understand which one has the greater reward. Which one has the greater reward? God's face or God's hand? Planting the garden or reaping the garden? Or um uh sorry, what was my other one? See you guys, I'm sleepy. Having influence or being a popular woman, which one has more uh, the, the, the lasting reward? Which one has the lasting reward? Our E today for equipment is actually a quote. And I looked up because I knew the quote, but I couldn't figure out who wrote it. So I figured out according to Google, this is from C.T. Studd. And it said, only what you do for Christ will last. When I was writing this, that was replaying in my brain only what you do for Christ will last remember before you want to be popular before you want to be the one eating from the garden the things that you do for Christ the planting the nurturing the growing the helping others those are the things that truly last also I want us to remember as our equipment that the Bible says that God looks at the heart so we need to say, God, in all of these things, even if I kind of prefer the other one over the other, let me have the right heart, the right motive, and the right spirit, because that is what he looks at, and that's what worship is, what it comes from our heart. A for our assignment is to daily ask God to show us the bigger picture and to help us have a desire for him and to help us in our decision making. Today's lesson was about the decision. It's your decision what your preference is. It's your decision of which one you rather go after and which goal you rather have. So A, ask God to show you the bigger picture, the one that really has the reward. Not what man says the reward is, but what the true reward of God is. And ask him 
for guidance in your decision making. Okay, I love you ladies. Thank you all who joined live and thank you all who will watch on the replay. I will see some of you tomorrow for Pearls of Wisdom for a Wonderful Woman on Wednesday, which is a P4W on TikTok. And I will see the rest of you later. I do plan on doing some cooking videos this week. We're going to see if that happens. And if all goes well, I do actually have a surprise for you guys next week. So goodbye, ladies. Have a great rest of your evening. And remember to make wise, virtuous decisions.